guys, RJ here, Road to Liberty. Um, I'm here at the lake house. It's the new PA property I was telling you guys about in some previous videos um, that me and my dad got into in Pennsylvania. Um, anybody interested in renting um, a beautiful escape, I'll do uh, some videos in the future that give a better look at the lake property as we uh, you know, do some work on it. It's not very big. It's actually quite small, and it's 100 years old, but um, we're putting our heart and soul into it. Anyway, um, I'm doing a quick un- scripted video today for you guys about uh, the market and uh, a very common misconception about the free market and what it's all about. So I want to keep this short and sweet and hopefully nail a point that uh, might help wake up a lot of um, liberals especially because I was a liberal too. So liberals, if you're watching this, hopefully you're watching this. Don't think I'm coming after you as someone who's always been born against you and it's just, you know, it's a clash of the bloods and the crips. It's not like that. I am um, coming from the point of view of the topic of minimum wage and coming from the point of view of the liberal that wants to promote minimum wage as a um, progressive policy that, um, you know, aims to, you know, better society. Um, it's a noble cause and that's something that should be commended. It's not as if people who are liberal or promoting minimum wage are should be you know seen as evil or horrible people unless they really do have a background in economics and they really do have a you know a more solid understanding of the things they're pushing for really circling the wagons a little bit back to the topic of minimum wage uh, from a libertarian perspective as a recap why it's not good. My point with for doing the video is that there's an Atlantic post, um, The Atlantic, that talks about the moral and economic imperative of raising the minimum wage, I guess, on a federal level. And it's pretty absurd, I think, in a way, because, well, I don't think, I know it's absurd, and I'll tell you why on both, on both cases, and then we'll talk on, about the market and my point real quick. Um, morally, it's, you, you can't say that it's an immoral imperative to raise the minimum wage, Whereas I can understand from a moral perspective for someone that sees it as a moral good to give to the poor or to see to the betterment of those who are downtrodden in life, raising the minimum wage could be considered a moral quandary or something like that. But when put in its proper framework, moral you know, is a delegation of rights. And if we don't have the first right of our own property and our own person and our own labor in our own existence, then we don't really have any other rights from from that. Uh, if you don't own yourself, if you don't own, you know, your body, if you don't own the results of your actions, namely the, the rewards that you get, you know, for your actions, then why punish us? Why 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 go to jail? Why be punished if, if we can't even adequately receive the reward? Can't truly really own land in America. Um, so it's certainly not a moral imperative to give things to people for free um, because that would entail a positive right um, on the part of the people giving the resources that they have an entitlement or, or responsibility rather to, to, to give those resources. Um, and that clearly doesn't follow from anything with first principles that you know certain people are born with a with the responsibility to give resources and other people are born with the responsibility to get free res or a right to receive free resources a much more clear way of thinking is that everyone has a negative right which is a right to be left secure in their persons and property which is in the constitution which is in the bill of rights you all stated should know this stuff better than me moral imperative that's debate that's shot down um as for the economic imperative this is the this is the crux of the video, guys. Thank you for having the patience to stay through here. I'm going to keep this one relatively short. Um, economic imperative, in the same sense that you use the word moral imperative, uh, the Atlantic and, and uh, whoever wrote that article, I didn't really check before I started this, and you know, it's the readers. To say something's an economic imperative means that you have an understanding of economics and means that you have an understanding of like I can't say something's an automotive imperative. Like you have to get your brakes done. If I don't know anything about cars, so to say something's an economic imperative and then have a, a, a shaky, if at best, understanding of economics, is reckless exuberance and 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 it's willful, uh, 
you know, negligence. It's like if you went to a doctor's office and they just said, you know, have a seat. The clown will be right in to, to take care of your surgery. You wouldn't have a seat. Like right out of the gate, they're saying it's an economic imperative to give stuff away for free that you take from other people. All right, so we already tackled the moral problem, but if you understand economics, and this is the crux of this video, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Economics isn't the latest system, um, you know, that, you know, John Locke or this one or that one totally developed. Economics is a natural functioning thing like gravity, and it's really important that we get this. It's really important that the libertarians and the voluntarists understand this one important thing about economics. And it's uh, really important that the liberals get this too, that uh, the idea of an economy, the idea of, of a market isn't like, oh, that was good until, until giving things away came along and we figured out how to sustain that as a society. Like, I had that, that this optimistic feeling like, oh, cool, you know, we live in the dawn of an amazing era and there's enough, you know, wealth to go around. People who are regular people who vote and who, who think they know what, um, what's best for the world, who, who think democracy is the, is the golden goose, they don't understand how narrow a margin could be for a company. They understand that companies operate on 40-year timelines at, at points in time. So when you project your prices or your, your staff or you're opening a new facility, you don't just say, oh, you know, the taxes change year to year or the cost of coal went up year to year. You look at long-term trends, and the left is winning this country, and the left is pulling this country into more socialism and more take and more free. More take and more free is going to result in the people who produce, the people who are qualified, going agorist, going under the radar, and going out of the country. Once that takes place, all bets are off. There is no more economy to reap free things from. So the blind lead the deaf into a cave and then a cliff, you know. So... Uh, I'm glad I could uh, hopefully get that point out to you guys. I don't want to go any further with it because I want you guys to get this in as short a sweet as way as possible. Minimum wage, moral, economic, imperative, the Atlantic. Think about it. Just just do the do the math in your own head. Think about it. Let me know if I'm crazy. And then if so, tell me how I'm crazy in the comments or or make a video and shoot me a link and I'll I'll respond to your video as to how your thoughts are either changed mine or or how I could you know refute those points. Because I want to have a dis discussion on this. The Atlantic is a huge online publication, and they, they're they getting away saying that this is an imperative uh, morally and economically. So what are your thoughts, guys? Like, subscribe, share, um, especially with liberals. Thanks for watching. Bye.